let me go one more step that is this very simple analysis that we presented leads us to very important questions about firm. First that what we started off in the beginning it, it a firm will have to decide whether I should make or buy. Hmm. Make a equipment whether I should okay make or buy in the sense that should I produce something produce or something. should I buy from somebody? I buy from somebody I do not need to invest in the capital. In the capital. The thing, yeah. Right? Yeah. If I make it, if I have to make it then I need the capital. Yeah. yeah. So, in a way we can say that this entire discussions and debates about outsourcing is an offshoot of this decision of make or buy. Yeah. Should I, should I. Uh, because I, suppose I want to buy, if I am going to buy from you. Yeah. You may have already invested in a capital. Yes. And that capital you may be using for doing work for many companies. Yes. So, when I go to you and I buy from you. Yeah. The cost that I am going to incur basically is in your marginal cost. Yes. Phase, right? Yes. Whereas, if I have to invest in the capital and do it myself. Yeah. To make, yeah. Then I have to, my, it will be my total, the initial part of the total cost. cost yes. Right? Yes. Then it is capital cost intensive. Yes. So, I will be at a disadvantage. I might as well just buy. So, so in the beginning I could buy yeah. and then later on when I get some volumes then I could decide I will. Should I make yeah. or should I continue buying this? Uh, I can start making. Okay. But there is one, one important thing that we need to keep this uh, in mind here that is it is also a function of the what we call as the sunkness of the fixed cost. What do we mean by sunk cost? Sunk cost is when the fixed cost cannot be recovered at all. Because the value of the goods have changed something dramatically become lesser. One or uh, even if I sell that with a scrap value that mm -hmm. machine, that machine can be only see the problem with machine is machine is lumpy. Mm -hmm. If I want to produce uh, only 20 units, mm -hmm. it might not be possible because the machine might have an installed capacity of 100 units. Mm -hmm. So, there is a kind of a lumpiness in this. You can't, this, this, though we have said 1, 2, 3, 4 hours may not be like that. It, it may not be like Minimum that. Minimum items you have to produce. You have to. Otherwise, it is not economical. Uh -huh. Now, some of these machines, if if I am becoming very inefficient in the market and if I want to exit or if I want to shut down or whatever my operations, uh -huh. even if you sell that, it might not yield you much. Right. So, that kind of, of, an, of a cost is called as a sunk cost. sunk cost. You cannot recover that at all. It is sunk. Example, uh, certain contractual agreements for marketing, I have already entered into an agreement with an agency and whether I use it or not, I have to pay it up front. Then it is up to me to decide whether I should use or how much I should use. But if I do not use it, well, he is not you going to… advertising space on some channels. Channels, channels. yeah. We have to pay up front. <laughs> Sunk, sunk cost. Sunk. So, depending on the sum, sunk cost also, uh -huh. I will decide whether I should actually make or buy. Mm -hmm. So, sunk cost is a very important concept in terms of this decision making, very important decision. Now, uh, so, so that actually comes very close to a lot of real life examples. So, for example, this entire outsourcing thing, very interesting models we have seen in India also, BATA. Mm. Bata used to outsource even now uh, mm. kind of you know our uh, you know footwear mm. to local producers mm. and they will say that we need so many pieces with this kind of a design with these these quality specifications mm. we are going to buy from you. I do not have a big uh, factory for you know 1000 workers to come and produce this footwear, okay. but I am selling it mm. and all that I am procuring from the local producers I will have my seal. Bata, quality standards. but Bata decided to buy it because they think that producing by themselves is not an efficient model. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of examples in real life we can see mm -hmm. in terms of this, but we need to mm -hmm. keep but Bata in. might give the materials. There are different models of this outsourcing thing, no? Mm -hmm. the, uh, materials, uh, some of these models, uh, they give the materials also to keep their quality standards mm -hmm. very fixed. Mm -hmm. Because there is a possibility that we might not be able to make out what material the other person is using in production process. Mm. So, if you want to control over that, we will give you the material, mm. Mm. one kind of a model. Mm. Another kind of a model is basically the um, designs. No? For example, um, the simplest kind of a, an outsourcing with material is this local puppet making units sometimes. Mm. No? Mm. They give the dough and then these ladies you know have to make so many puppets a day. 
and depending on how many papas a day they make they are paid mm -hmm. for every papa 1 rupee or it's a labor contract it's a labor contract all those decisions are this make or buy decisions and depending on your cost variables you arrive at these decisions second important decision in, is in, in in terms of the pricing decisions of firms how much should i price it is a function of your cost directly and we will again keep coming back to that because then we will look at some of the basic pricing models later on when we bring in you know different markets also third important uh, uh, concept is that uh, quantity decisions are very important how much to produce how much to produce and a firm has control over two variables basically quantity or price or both so depending on the type of market in which the firm operates it can actually vary the quantity vary the price or so monopoly it can do both <coughs> it can do both right yeah in in an oligopoly sometimes it can vary one hmm. but immediately it might actually invite right. your yeah. rivals <laughs> rivals respond hmm. in a perfectly competitive market you have no control over so price for example opec <coughs> sets prices so price there is no control there is no control only quantity you can decide yeah so much oil to produce yeah but that's a cartel opec is a cartel, cartel so you have to go by the cartel you can't deviate from that and ah. so it's a very di different kind of a model then then um, that actually takes us to this whole concept of competition mm. because <clears throat> as we just saw either i can vary price in certain markets or quantity or both what should be the kind of an instrument that i should use in terms of competing in markets is determined by your cost variables as well as your market variables then so what i wanted to convey is that this entire cost analysis then gives us very useful insights okay